after 30 years on testosterone at 58 years old, these are my labs. I just got the results back yesterday afternoon. Big shout out to the Holy Cross team right here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The phlebotomist and all the people there that engage with me are such sweethearts. These people work in the trenches and really, really in the clinical trenches before pandemic, during the pandemic, after the pandemic. Selfless people working so hard and they're so fun, so smart, and they did a great job because they made sure I got these labs back within hours. So that was Friday, today's Saturday, and I'm bagging this out for you guys. You guys, you gotta put on the thinking caps. All the stuff here really is for me to look at, but I'm gonna make it very clear because here's, this is gonna be how it's gonna be presented, A, B, C, Ds. I have to say it all the time because this is the A, B, C, Ds of sustainable health. If you follow my direction with the A, B, C, Ds of health, with steroids, testosterone, or even if you're a woman or a man and you're never on androgens, I promise you, I've laid it all. This is, this is really the, the holy grail. There's no one's gonna argue cardiac death and cancer, number one and two causes of death. Guys, research it, research it, and it's all right here, mainly cardiac, that's number one. And everything else is common sense. Here we go, guys. Now, if you want to see the details on this same exact presentation with all the medicines that I'm on right here, can't do it on YouTube. I just can't do it. They just don't allow that. It's gonna break the rules. I'm not here to break any rules. I'm here to help people. Get on the Anabolic Doc app. It's uncensored. It's my medium, my revolution, digital medical revolution for men's health on earth. Obviously, most men on androgens, and that's gonna affect your health. You wanna have a great health. You wanna live, boom! You wanna have fun with that. When you're getting older and never have any health consequences the best you can. Here we go. A stands for hemoglobin A1C in red and glucose. It's found on a comprehensive metabolic panel. I can tell you that here. That, that's the lab right here. And this is going to be the lab right here. This is a comprehensive metabolic panel. This is the standard for how we used to write things down in med school and residency. And if you present it, when I used to use pieces of paper 10, 20 years ago, now it's all computers. The students and the doctors don't have to wait. We used to write this stuff out. I could do this in my sleep. Internal medicine residents, man, it was tough and I'm sure it still is. So hats off to you guys in training, doctors in training. Here it is, A1C and glucose. A1C, mine is 5.2%. Here's the standard. It's got to be under 5.7%. If you're at 5.7, up to 6.4, you're pre-diabetic. Half of America, nearly half America, is in the pre-diabetic uh, standard. That's unbelievable. Half of America is pre-diabetic. You're going to be diabetic. Guys, take care of yourselves. Listen to this. If you're over, when you look at this right here, when you're over, that's five, seven to six, four. Doctors don't always check this. You have to ask for it. Hemoglobin A1C and a comprehensive metabolic panel. I'm going to say things over and over and over for guys. You have to understand it because guys always ask me questions. Doc, what'd you say? It's, a, it's okay. It's a lot of stuff. If you're over 6.5, you're a type 2 diabetic. And of course, we recheck it. You lose weight. You, you cut your carbs. There are medicines right here. I'm going to point to them, and I, I'm on these medicines. But I'm not, again, I'm not going to start talking about medicines here and the doses, but on the Anabolic Doc app, I'm going to let it rip completely. That's what I do. That's why I made the app. So I don't, I don't have to break anyone else's regulations. I own the app myself. I could do what I like, and I'm here to help people. So A1C, my glucose. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you're concerned for your testosterone levels. 
In addition to testosterone, you want to check sexual marine binding globulin, estradiol, free androgen index, and potentially cortisol. That's what I want to talk about today's sponsor. Let's get checked. They're a worldwide leader in at-home test kits, so you can get a comprehensive look at your testosterone levels and other labs without even leaving your home. You can order a test kit that will be delivered to you in discrete packaging. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account. These results are reviewed by a clinician and a member of the Let's Get Checked nursing team may call you to review your results. Let's Get Checked laboratories are CLIA approved and CAP accredited, which are the highest ranking levels of accreditation for labs. So if you want to test your hormone levels without having to leave your home, visit trylgc.com. My glucose is 64 milligrams per deciliter. Now the range of that on this lab is 74 to 100, that's wrong. It's about 65, there's a lot of hand waving guys. There's a lot of these I put, I, I try to write down all the reference ranges and even the units for you because I want to make other doctors proud that you always have to understand your units. So I hope I don't mispronounce anything here. So this is glucose fasting. I fasted right on the money 12 hours. Not easy because I like to wake up have some coffee. You know what I mean, guys? So this was hard to do, but I came in at 64. It might be because of that medicine right there. might just be because I fasted. And I'm just in great shape, and I'm just shredded, and I'm trying to bench 450 up with my shirt on, at, you know, with a bench shirt, guys, and I'm just having a blast. I am 58 years old, and I'm feeling very good, and I want to share the secret. A, I'm so proud of that. I, I eat great. I train hard. I eat whatever I want, though, guys. I just I, I keep the portion control down. And of course, I do cardio and high intensity, and I lift. I don't lift that much because I don't want to get injured, but you have to learn all this for yourself. That's what the app is for, to get into that. So check the comprehensive metabolic hemoglobin A1C. I don't want this video to be long, but it might be long, but it's going to be worth it. So again, mine's five point. You don't want to be much over 5'4 or 5'6. You, you, some guys are under 5'. Under if you're under 5 or under even 5'2 or 5'3 right here, you're fine. Again, no, someone's going to say, oh, Doc, you want to be up under 5. No, you don't. Not, not with a glucose of 64 milligrams per deciliter. I'm 100%. My glycemic, my A is A+. Let's keep going. I'm an internist, guys. Let's keep going. B is blood pressure. Thinking caps, guys. Blood pressure. Let's talk about the estimated GFR because everything is about the heart and kidneys, but the B is blood pressure. And this is, again, you want to correlate this part of the talk with a comprehensive metabolic panel, okay? It's all right here, guys. I laid it out right here. These are my real labs, fresh out of the press, fresh out of the labs, fresh out of the arm. So, CMP. This is the comprehensive metabolic panel. My LFTs are normal. This is really a basic metabolic panel. Let's put the thinking caps on. I went to, I look at this right away. I'm so nervous. Guys, I'm such a almost full-blown hypochondriac, nervous, neurotic wreck about my heart and my kidneys. Isn't that crazy that I'm that way? It's actually not bad for you guys. You, you got to be concerned for this stuff. And of course, I've been on androgens Shh, don't tell anyone, guy. It's a big secret, right? Wow, wink, wink. I'm no, I'm no fake natty, but I don't want to have a heart attack or, or hurt my kidneys, and I want to live to a ripe old age of about 110, and no wheelchairs for me. Functionality and quality of life is all that matters to me, and I'm sure you agree with me. B is blood pressure. Estimated GFR. Focus, guys. My BUN creatinine is, with a grace of God, perfect. Let's go into something here, really complex, that I really took time to research, even today, to make sure it's accurate information medically for you. The estimated GFR, guys, the estimation, little e, glomerular filtration rate, is, is so important. Is your, are your kidneys functional? And there, there's, this is an estimation, and it's, okay, there's three classic equations to, to predict this and to come down to these numbers. They're very crude numbers, guys. That's why you got to pay attention to me. The old one was the Cockraft 
and Galt equation. That was years ago. Then, in, uh, and some places still use it. In the end, they, they end up using the modif modification diet in renal disease. I'm making the renal guys and nephrology guys proud right now. I'm gonna, I'm being very accurate and I'm being very precise and evidence-based for you renal guys. These are brothers from different mothers. I, mean, I ain't no nephrologist, guys. I'm just, I'm just kind of a little internist. So this is the secondary one. Now, this lab, guys, right here, it says, it says effective October 2022, they're using C. KD EPI <coughs> equation. That is the chronic kidney disease epidemiological equation. <laughs> Guys, it's unreal. This is the one they, this is without race. And they actually indicated right here. Anyone who wants to come in and see my labs, I'm, I'm opening up a huge office. It's going to be half office down here, South Florida, half media studio. And for all you fans, all you guys to just come in, we're going to crank. So, but it's not open yet, guys. So the, it says right, I want you guys to fact check every damn thing I say. It says right here, they're using this equation, CKD EPI equation, and they're doing it without race because the other one, this MDRD, it had African-American versus non-African American. And again, there is these equations, guys, they, 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 they have to, if you saw the equation, it's crazy. Age is in there, male, female, body weight should be in there, but it's obviously not. They use like surface areas for the average bear. So if you're not the average bear and you have muscle tissue, it absolutely affects it. If you're, if you're taking creatine, which I, I do take creatine, I take all sorts of little pre-workouts and stuff. I made sure, and I didn't train and God bless my guys I train with in, in, in my gym, the, the heavy intense training gym in, in Coral Springs. Shout out to you guys, man. I train heavy power to think. I, I still, of course I still do, but I just don't go like I used to when I was two. I don't want to tear anything. I've torn enough. So you, I, you can't go heavy and be dehydrated and talk about the, the hydration status here in a minute, about what's something going on up here. So with the sodium, you, you, you have to understand the, the training, the dehydration the, the supplements are going to have an effect here. If your body weight, if you're heavy, if you're not heavy, if, if who, your race, it does come into a, effect uh, to some degree, but they're, they're trying to be cautious on that, which I understand. So in the end, this is brand spanking new and, and more of the political stuff there. The MD already <laughs> was fine, but you, you better understand this stuff. And you better, if you don't like your numbers, if you don't like it, the creatinine guys, look at my, with the grace of God, I used to be higher on that because I was heavier. Just, you know, I, was, I was younger, but heavier. So, I mean, to, if my kidneys are everything to me in my heart, guys, I, I don't know about you. So statin C and C in nephrology. If you, don't, if you don't like this, if it's not right, you're very big, don't take the supplements. Stop the supplements 72 hours to maybe a week before. And, if, and, and verify it with a nephrology doctor. If your kid, we have to pick up chronic kidney disease early, not just steroid users, but so many have proteinuria. I didn't do the protein in the urinalysis here because I did it a few months ago and it was perfect. So I just didn't want to waste my time with that. I'm fine, but it's not a waste of time. You, you need that. That's just not something I had to do here because I know I have no proteinuria. Never had proteinuria with the grace of God. You have protein or blood in your urinalysis. Boy, you better see nephrology. Okay, I don't want to hear it just, oh, that's normal, I have that. Really? Did a nephrologist say that? Or is a doctor saying that who may not be sure? Because I say all day long, I'm not sure. But I know where to send people, you know, as a manager to get answers from specialists. So statin C, if you don't like this number and your estimated GFR doesn't look right, so statin C, guys. I'm going to provide all this stuff on the app for you guys again, in North America for labs. No doctor's prescription, every state except for three. Nephrology, all right. Because blood pressure is gonna affect everything but really the kidney and the heart. It, it just will, it will destroy your heart and kidneys. I'm begging you guys. If you're on testosterone, even testosterone can increase blood pressure. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. And as you get older, blood pressure goes up. What do you do about, these are the medicines I'm on guys right here, okay? Th this is gonna be fully covered, uncensored on this version of this presentation on the Anabolic Doc app. Okay, so I hit the A, I hit the B, let's go to C. 
uh, before I go to C, let's finish up the comprehensive metabolic panel. Something very interesting I want to show you. So this is so the sodium 135 was actually a little bit low. Potassium's normal, thank God, chloride and CO2, BUN, creatinine. I was a hair low on that because I tried something that a lot of guys, my patients do and people talk about. I drank some water, like I pounded like probably almost like probably a half a liter, you know, maybe 300 milliliters, like as I kind of woke up and went to the, I didn't eat to the lab and it, it had effect on that. So it made my sodium look a little bit low, but I really don't have hypo uh, natremia, guys. There's hyper and hypo syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic. But guys, this is <laughs> this is internal medicine, man. It's complicated. It's I diluted myself down. Now, did it really affect this so much? It will affect this before that. Someone had a question on that. I know a friend of mine. I didn't tell him that, but I know I researched that, and this is really, really going to be affected first, and this will be next, and then also on. The, uh, a lot of guys, I tell them, it's true, drink some water. If you're dehydrated, it's going to elevate your, your, your hematocrit, even hemoglobin. It's dilutional stuff, kind of very complicated, guys, but I'm, I'm packing this in, thing in for you guys. So that's the comprehensive metabolic panel. With the grace of God, it's the glucose, the A1C, and it's the, uh, the liver. My LFTs are normal. I didn't even put them on. Because comprehensive means comprehensive. It means all the kidney, the liver, the glucose, okay? And this is mainly the kidney that I care about, that you should care about, okay? B, blood pressure. And then you better control your blood pressure. My blood pressure on these meds, my weight with the way I live my life, with how much I drink, don't drink, how much I train, stress, my eating, the whole, the medicines, my blood pressure, when I check it in the morning, during the afternoon, on my medicines, on everything, is usually about 110, 112, 116 over like 68 to like 78, 70. I am not kidding. Guys, you want that. You don't want 128, 130, 140, uh, over 82, 88 or higher. You're destroying your health. That's it. No argument. Do something about it. Yeah, diet, no salt, weight, height. I'm going to get on the diet. I'm going to stop, stop eating. It's my year. It's my year. Right? This is the time of year. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to start running again. And I, you're a great dude, man. You're a great, good. Do it. Is it really working? If it is, you're done. Don't need medicines. Otherwise, me, I've been taking medicine 20 years straight. I've been on and off medicines for probably 30 years or more, you know, as a, as a med student and, and a resident and understanding. But 20 years ago, I anchored in because I saw I had plaque in the artery, 37 years old, 21 years. Uh, and, and I started going on these meds. No question about it, hands down. That's why I am in your face and aggressive. If you can take no medicines at all, if you think, if you, some people are lucky, how many? Less than 1%. You're not lucky. I'm not lucky. <laughs> but I'm lucky to be here and to do great and to be here telling you this stuff. A, B. We have to, well, you guys, I have to browbeat it because you have to understand. C, cholesterol, cardiac, coronary artery, calcium score, echo, lipid. This is the cholesterol, lipid panel. Let's, let's find the lipid panel right here. My total cholesterol, okay. 91 milligrams per deciliter. The, 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 the range would be less than 200. It's ridiculous. LDL, it's, my LDL is 33 milligrams per deciliter. And that's, it's on some medicines, you know, guys. And you know what I didn't put in here? I'm going to put in, oh, I did. It's right there. Right there. I, I got some secret meds I want to share with you guys. I'm just not, I'm just going to point to it. I'm not going to talk about it. So look at that. And I feel great, guys. And on some, I'm on some statin, but I'm, I don't take it every day. That's a secret. And it's some other medicines. And of course, my diet and exercise and my genes and my age and I'm on, on uh, androgen. But this is the horsepower probably. The B and the C, of course the A. This is why people have the, the whole country's early cardiac disease and obesity and all this stuff. But I'm telling you right now, I've put together a formulation of behavior changes that everyone knows about, doing it though, and the medicines that I don't think anyone's really, really ever done. Any doctor in this planet has put together this kind of stuff, is, in, is insanely, is intensely with evidence-based support and getting it done day by day. There's a few people that have, matter of fact, 
Forgive me for that. Of course there are. But this is the eagles that fly very high together. And they're, they're, we need to get out and show you guys these secrets. My LDL is 33. I can't have a heart attack. You need it, everyone. I don't care who you are, less than 100. This is milligrams per deciliter. Less than 70 if you have any risks at all. And then I like to have mine less than 40. And I have data to support it because I had a little plaque in the artery and I'm, I'm dissolving that plaque as I move through life and get older. Everyone else is going to accumulate plaque and have a heart attack. Number one cause of death and disability. Fact check it right now. Fact check number one cause of death in America. Check right now. It's right here. Non HDL cholesterol. They didn't do it on this one. I calculated myself. It's non. It's the non, It's the HDL minus the cholesterol. Mine's so low. It's again. This is another indication. It's another standard of care where everyone can't go fasting because they're so lazy. I think they can't go fasting to the labs. So. They, they, they make it so you don't have to go fasting. So they're saying the non-HDL cholesterol you don't have to be fasting for is going to be equal to or better than this LDL and the totals and all these different calculations. You want to be less than 130, but it depends on if you have heart disease, other comorbidities, or diabetes, and all these different things. Triglycerides, mine are 49. So guys, the, the, my A is A+. Plus. My B is A+. Plus. It's a lot of work. I'm on medicines for this. I'm going to show the medicines. I'm going to share it. C, the, my cholesterol, another massive A+. Plus. You think you don't, you think you're okay right here? You're wrong. I, I'm just telling you you're wrong. You're going to have plaque in the artery. Get a calcium score. If you're anywhere around the age of 30 to, to 35 or 40, you're a man with any risk factors. Check out the risk factors, family history, non-optimal cholesterol, non-optimal blood pressure, non-optimal sugar. Guys, you have to listen to me. Get a calcium score. You'll be amazed that you have the beginnings of hard plaque, atherosclerosis. We know it's not soft plaque. You're not gonna, you don't need a CT angio. I do this all day. I make decisions for people all day long and I use evidence-based conservative and it's common sense to me. Don't you wanna know so you can take care of this stuff and, and get a new goal so you A, B, C, D when you're my age and you're just killing it and you're just, I can't have a heart attack. I make it that way. That's why I'm so fired up for this presentation, guy. This is really from the heart, my heart. This is my labs right here, right out of the vein. So that's C, D. Let's keep going, guys. D, deposition disease. I'm a man, not to mention, you can see the genes are from Northern Europe ancestry. I have potential genes for hereditary hemochromatosis. This is something that's the most complex of all of the stuff that I do during the day. I have a whole playlist on red blood cells. You have to understand this stuff yourself. Just checking a CBC, it's not enough. The anti-aging place is just dumping blood. It's, it's, it's cringy and embarrassing, not to mention uh, almost criminal and, and, and just dismissive. Wow, check the ABC. Check, check, check the CBC and just dump blood. Everyone has to dump blood. Wrong, 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 wrong. It's got to be fingerprint. It's got to be done. So D, deposition disease androgen-induced erythrocytosis. Let's get into it, okay? You need to, this is the lab you need. CBC and iron studies, it's all here on the app. You could order them on the Anabolic Doc app with no doctor's prescription. Comprehensive metabolic panel, lipid panel, and you don't need this advanced stuff, guys. Go for the basic low-hanging fruit. Everyone wants the advanced stuff. Meanwhile, if I did a history and physical on you, I'd find so much basic stuff that's that's easy or not easy to fix and important to fix, and then you're going launching off into the, the this detailed stuff that can be important, but it's in the wrong priority. You see that? You need basic stuff first, then go to the advanced lipid panel. If you have family history, horrible, you absolutely need an advanced lipid panel, LP little a, APO, lipoprotein B, absolutely. But do you know what to do about it? Well, I do. So, But you're not going to know. Only a lipidologist is going to know. Cardiology guys don't even know. I'm sorry, cardiology guys. I'm not very impressed with these guys when it comes to lipid uh, aggra being aggressive for risk factors from a preventive standpoint. That's a lipidologist and really good internist. It is true. 
So here it is, D, but I got cardiology guys, they're busy with real disease. You don't want to have disease? You, you, in my opinion, you should never want to see a, a cardiologist. See a preventive cardiologist, an internist, or a lipidologist. Guys, make the notes right there. Use your specialist. D right here, deposition disease. Angina-induced erythrocytosis. This is my CBC. 16.4 grams per deciliter hematocrit, 48.5% with the grace of God. My ferritin is 140 nanograms per milliliter. Oh my Lord, I deal with this all day long. There's some luck here. My genes, I used to, when I was heavier, you guys got to believe me. When I was heavier on this sleep apnea stuff, where's my sleep apnea stuff? When I was heavier on this stuff, I had problems controlling this and I had to phlebotomize. I lost weight and got lean and ripped. Of course, I want to be at 181 so I can bench press some good, nice records up in the world. I don't, I'm not going to get the number one spot, but I'll get in the top 10 when I'm 60 if I can just hang in there. And that's just motivation for me. It's not fun. Just hang around long enough, you'll be up in the top. It's just fun. So when you look at the CBC, of course, my white cells and my platelets with the grace of God, my bone marrow function is perfect. Androgens really don't affect the platelets. I don't want to have any arguments. It doesn't. It affects the red blood cell line. Androgen-induced erythrocytosis. It is so important to understand how you, you deal with this right here, that you need to stay lean. You need to, to understand how to treat sleep apnea and CPAP. You need to not take too much androgen, guys. This is where test and DECA and test and equipoise, again, they can be dangerous because testosterone can affect this. And I'm not going to go into this video for, for what are the dangers of this right here of, of D, of deposition disease. Well, there's two potential. One is you're going to deposit iron if your ferritin and your saturations and the total iron, which mine are perfect and they're 73 on the scale of 50 to 200. Saturation, low normal because I'm using it up. It's a good problem to have, 20 to 55. And my ferritin's down to is normal 140. It's down that lower range there, thank God. So it, right here, I don't need to phlebotomize. You see, and I don't need to phlebotomize for my, my, my H&H &H because of these numbers here. But if I see that ferritin creep up to about over like 200, 250 or 300, I would want to phlebotomize, guys. Or go more plant-based, plant lower the androgens, lose weight, treat sleep apnea. Guys, I'm telling you, there's, I'm packing everything in this video for you guys, but you're going to start seeing there is the ABCDs. If you do them, they're, they're, they're easy to really understand and do yourself. So again, so the deposition disease, let's talk about it though. Age is an issue. Here it is. I talked about the sleep apnea. Androgens, TRT versus and Even TRT can be horrible. And some guys walk around with hemoglobins of, of, of over 20. So the risk, again, deposition disease and potential venous thromboembolism, which is DVT blood clots in the lower limbs typically, they can go up to a pulmonary embolism. And, they're in, and stroke and heart attack, it's all tied in, guys. The ABCDs are all tied together. This is very tricky data, and I know there's no data to really directly go from androgen-induced erythrocytosis directly to venous thromboembolism. I'm, I, your doctors out there, I have some great doctors, I, the one doctor in Switzerland, God bless you, brother. I, I know there's, it's an indirect and it's a, it's a potential unknown because people that, that walk around without androgens that have uh, hemoglobins that are equal to or greater than slightly 18 and hematocrits around 54%, they're up on elevation, they're on elevation in the world or they have different other degrees of genes that they don't all have uh, venous thromboembolism problems and clots and uh, pulmonary embolisms and strokes. They, they don't. This is so multifactorial, but you, it's not polycythemia vera revisited from androgens. I know you guys are cool. This is interesting stuff. That's what doctors think. It looks like polycythemia vera where it's, it's not affecting the full bone marrow. It's, it's an apple to an orange. Could it lead on top of everything else that you have blood clots? 
we don't know. It's the estrogen. We don't know the the the, the androgen. Your genes for for clotting disorder, factor five, protein C and S. Guys, again, this is my day job. I see I see blood clots often, but I've seen them on women that are not on androgens. It's not just androgens. But again, this is a thorough review checklist. A, B, C, D, and here are the D. The D is obviously so complex. You stay lean and lose weight because you you think you don't have sleep apnea. Androgens cause sleep apnea. You don't even think you do have it, but you lose weight and you go, Doc, I lost weight like I did. I was used to be near 200. I'm lower. I'm mid lower 180s, and since I did it, my H and H, my hemoglobin hematocrit are perfect. They're under 17, and they're under 50 all the time. I've I've not phlebotomized in years. I don't want to because I don't. My ferritin and my iron saturation. Look at the iron sat 20. This is very comp. I would I would bring that into the lower numbers, and and men don't feel good. We, this is where we have no data, just my data, the correlating with men just not feeling well, more mood and just energy, just depletion. Your iron depleted. If a guy just tells you to dump blood and phlebotomize, and they're not looking at the iron studies again, CBC iron studies on D. Whew, almost done, guys. S. S is kind of like an everything, right? X stands for PSA. PSA. Where's my where's my PSA? That's going to be the, the the prostate, right? So this is something that PSA, serotonin, and depression, right? Do you need a, a PSA in a digital rectal examination? My PSA is zero point. I don't even. I didn't write it down here, guys. But I'm going to keep cranking because my PSA is way under one. I could tell you what it is right here. My PSA is 0 0.79. 0 0.79. Forgive me for not putting it down. I just have to move. So my PSA is low and I do have my prostate checked whoop, 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 by a real expert urologist here in Florida. And he checks my prostate once a year. He actually goes out and asks me to do like 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 pelvic ultrasounds in my bladder or my pride. So guys out in my testicles, guys, he is outstanding. It's it's always better to overdo something if you have an expert doing it. If you have a non-expert overdoing something and just winging it, you're screwed. I know I know what line I color within the lines. Maybe not up here I don't because I can't, but I know where to go and where not to go. I I got something wrong with my prostate, my patients, urology. Something wrong with the heart, cardiology, or lipidology, preventive cardiology, or internal medicine. You're diabetic or you have endocrine issues, endocrinology, cardiology, D, deposition disease. You know who that is? Hematology. You know, and hepatology, if you got something wrong with your liver. I use these guys. Oh, this is why I know all this. I use I, 20 years, my 20th year of, 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 being, of uh, being out of medical school and being in training uh, from my training up at University of Connecticut. So, okay, guys, that is it. What else can I tell you? The PSA, digital rectal serotonin depression, it's really kind of not in here. I've had depression, but I'm out of it now and I feel like a million bucks. I talk more about this stuff on the app. You know, we have man to man meetings. So what else can I tell you? Vitamin D is 38 nanograms per milliliter. The range is 30, <coughs> 30 to 70. Don't go over 70. It can cause all sorts of hypercalcemia. It can cause atrial fibrillation. Don't do they, don't overdose vitamin D. Vitamin D and K2 are important. I take it. It's very important. But don't just do it, check it, and don't overdose. B12, because I'm on a medicine. You see the medicine right there? Right there, and if and if mine's 499 picograms per milliliter, range 200 to 900. If you're if you're down, if you're something around 200 or 300 neuropsychiatric symptoms, maybe you can just take some vitamin B12. Not a big deal. But if you've had inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, a lot of you guys, a lot of people have Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, more Crohn's. This is and your bowels are affected. You you better check your B12 levels. And then if you had any gastric procedures, bariatric surgery, where they do a lot of those weight loss surgeries, you have to check a lot of vitamins and B12 and vitamin D and just be vigilant on, uh, it's all very specific. So, 
All right, guys, that is my labs. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for bearing with me on this. This is just how I have to do it. I have to just put the camera on and just tear through everything. It's real, it's almost live, it's unedited, and it's for you guys. I want you to really think about this stuff and make sure you understand it. I can't answer questions here because it's just number one, I'm cranked, I'm out of my mind, busy with patients and media, and it's inappropriate for me to give medical. I can't give medical information or any, I've never given medical advice, but on my Anabolic Doc app, it's the closest thing to, to having me for information as a, as a healthcare provider. That's why we made it. And we're going to make version two because it's, it's growing fast. And it's just, we're trying to make it better and better with your input. So get on that Anabolic Doc app, guys. Come to the meetings with other men and me hosting it live. It's unbelievable. You, they ask all these questions and we get into it. But it's any question, sex. Anxiety, of course guys ask steroid questions, but I end up being very polite, but it's men, it's for men that care about their health and that are on androgens. But if they're on steroids and they have some good, I, talk, I use it as a talking point, but I'm always gonna go into the ABCDs and give ethical response. And I don't give advice, I give information. I show examples for how I typically would deal with this with the thousands of patients that I've had and I will have, because I still see patients. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I really hope this presentation was entertaining, humorous, and most important, helpful for you. Thank you.